When someone like suggests, uh, we suggested uh, starting by putting that number two in front of the x, we can put a number two in other places as well. Where else could I put it? I like side squared x. Whoa, okay. So we will get to side squared x soon, but for now, I want to look at somewhat simpler modifications of the graphs, which are basically sort of moving it about, but still somewhat recognizable as the sine x curve or the cos x curve. When we get to sine squared, which is actually more of an extension concept, you'll see that looks quite different. Okay. So staying without any powers or what have you, another place that I could put the two is not in with the x, but outside, up the front. Okay. So I could consider this. Okay. Now, come back to your calculator. Right? If you now are just mucking about with values and trying to see what's happening, right? If I put in rather than sine 2x, 2 sine, and then try some angles, try some angles, right? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, just humor me, I'm going to go 2 sine 0. Now, before you hit equals, what do you expect to happen? You should expect 0 because you've got this guy, sine 0 is 0. If you double 0, you still have 0, right? So that's fine. Now, when you hit equals, it does confirm for you. Let's try another thing. Let's try, say, 2 sine 90, okay? Now, when you hit equals, it supplies you a number. Is it what you expected? And do you see why it has to be that particular value, right? Uh, what's sine 90? Normal sine 90. One. It's 1. Right there it is, right? But you said, don't give me sine 90, give me 2 sine 90. So instead of being here at 1, he goes higher, up to 2. Okay? We can start to draw this thing now. When I go back to sine to 180 degrees, 2 sine 180 degrees is still 2 times 0. So it's still 0, right? So all of those intercepts are going to be the same, but I can go twice as high, and I can also go twice as low, because once I get to here, <laughs> what angle is that, by the way? The angle to get me to this turning point is 270. If you go 2 sine 270, it's going to go 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. Okay? So the graph is going to look much the same. In fact, I'm going to draw it the same. But to distinguish between what we've been doing over here and what we've been doing over there, the difference is a vertical scale. Right? So I didn't mention it before because it was somewhat obvious. But here, the up and down doesn't change. It's these values in here that change, right? So now I've got more frequent intercepts. Sorry, my scale's a little bit off. Okay. Whereas over here, it's not changing horizontally, it's actually changing vertically. Do you see that? So this is 2, and this is negative 2. Is that okay? Everything else is what it was on the original curve. Okay. So, what do we call this? Changing it in this way, up and down. We call this amplitude. <laughs> Bless you. Okay. Now, amplitude is actually much simpler, I think, than frequency and period. Frequency and period is a bit more confusing. I'm going to say something now, though, that has the potential to confuse you in the short term, but I hope long term will bear some fruit if I sow this seed now. Okay. Did you notice in the first thing? We change frequency and period, which is a horizontal thing. Do you agree? So I want you to imagine the sine curve a bit like an accordion, right? So you can like stretch it out or you can squeeze it in. And that makes sense because look at where the numbers are that we're changing over here. Look at where the two is and where the half is. What is it attached to? It's attached to the x, right? And x is about horizontal sort of squeezing and squashing. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, when you have a look over here, we're changing amplitude. Now, that's not about horizontal changes, is it? Horizontally, this thing looks identical to the original graph. It's not a horizontal accordion. It's a vertical accordion. Now, that's not obvious in the way that I've written it right now, so I'm going to change it a little bit. I'm going to write it, and I'm going to suggest you write it on the side as well, as a half y. Now you almost never see it like this. We tend to write things with y as the subject when you're graphing things. But I wonder if this helps you understand what is going on and how this is similar to what's happening over here. 
that number there, the half or the two, depending on which way you look at it, what it's really modifying is the y values, which is an up-down quantity, okay? It really actually doesn't belong over here. This is what it's changing. This is about vertical adjustment, okay? So if I were to say, okay, how much has this been squashed or squeezed up and down, right? I'm going to have within, from one to a negative one, I only get half of it. That's what this means, right? To go the full way, I can't just stay between one and negative one. I've got to go from two and negative two. Okay. So I like to write things like this because it clarifies for me what's actually being changed. And the answer is, why is it being changed? It's not as obvious here.